And this is about breastfeeding, the myths and the facts. And uh, we're going to be having this conversation with Adedai T. Olufemi, the founder of New Mums Hub. And this is one very good conversation we're having today. Good morning and welcome to the Good Morning Niger Show. Good morning. Thank you for having me. All right. Thank you for being here, actually. And I uh, hope we didn't barge into your early morning schedule. Hope we didn't do that. <laughs> No, it's fine. It's All right. Interesting. Well, uh, like I always do on the show, I always ask my guests how they are doing, honestly, because I know there's a pandemic. We all know there's a pandemic and a lot of things have changed. Uh, so honestly, how are you, honestly? <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing well. I mean, I'm doing I actually, I actually like the fact you have, to, you have to laugh a bit to be sure. <laughs> Am I really doing well? Is everything okay? <laughs> Yeah, I'm doing well. I hmm. mean, no schools right now, so I'm yeah. full time more. Um, I'm still working and juggling the house and all of that. Mm -hmm. So I get a bit intense, but. Mm -hmm. We're surviving. <laughs> it's all good. I like that. The survival uh, word is there. We're surviving. It's all good. So do you ever think we're going to get back to the new, no the regular normal, or we just have to get used to the new normal of, you know, the whole process? I do think we're going to get back to the regular, to be honest. I think that's that's gone. We just need to adjust to the okay. current normal and the normal that is coming, basically. So let's just see how it unfolds. See how it unfolds. I like that. Positive energy, uh, being optimistic in everything. Very nice. So we're looking at breastfeeding, the myths and the facts. Now, this is a very interesting conversation to have, uh, seeing the fact that uh, a lot of women go through different uh, mind processes in regarding breastfeeding. And that there are lots of questions I would have to ask. So let's even start from the, the different types because we never knew that there were different types of breastfeeding. So let's start from there. And if you can break down that for us, then we can move on in the conversation. Okay. Um, so you can either choose to do exclusive breastfeeding, okay. which means you are not giving water, no juice, no formula, mm -hmm. no rice cereal, nothing. You are sticking to just breastfeeding. And you can decide to complement with um, formula. I always tell mom, as much as uh, we advise that you stick to breastfeeding, because I mean, that's what the American Academy of Pediatrics advise, you mm -hmm. stick to breastfe breastfeeding alone for six months, because I mean, the breast milk contains everything your baby needs for the first six months of life. Mm -hmm. However, some work realities and some things make some mom want to um, complement breastfeeding with a bit of formula feeding. So that's yeah. not like full exclusive breastfeeding. So that's like complimentary. But just at the end of the day, what works for your work? What works for you? What works for your baby? What works for your family at the end of the day? And some moms don't breastfeed directly. Some moms decide to bottle feed. And that's also a type of breastfeeding. So you can decide to express your milk. And actually, if you have to go back to work, mm -hmm. and of course, you can't be physically there to breastfeed your baby. You mm -hmm. can decide to bottle feed, which means you would express via either pumping or under pressing and freeze your meal and whether your child care person is either a nanny or a family member mm -hmm. or daycare would feed your baby at at the right time with your breast milk. So even though you're not breastfeeding directly, but it's still a form of breastfeeding. Hmm. So ideally, which of these methods would you recommend ideally? Uh, be having to, uh, you know, have um, the the uh, solutions that they can take aside the breast milk. Which of them would you um, ideally recommend? Just straight up breast milk, or we can have this extra added solution to straight it. Straight up breast milk, you ask me. Except your realities don't allow it, but yeah, first option should be straight up breast milk. Straight up. Okay. And sure. uh, this this is because it uh, does it affect the growth of the child, the metabolism? How does it really react? Is it necessary um, for that? Yes, breast milk actually contains every nutrient your child needs. Mm -hmm. So, you are, I mean, it's free, it's always available. You don't have to warm, you don't have to do anything. Like, you just snap your bra and you breastfeed. So, mm -hmm. it's, it's a cheaper alternative. Um, it contains all the nutrients your baby needs. Mm -hmm. It's easy to digest. Mm -hmm. So, you're not even thinking of stomach upsets or constipation and all of these things, mm -hmm. you know. And, of course, it boosts your baby's immunity. So yeah, the positives are a lot, and it outweighs the convenience that formula um, offers, basically. Mm. 
Interesting. Now, I'm going to be taking up from the conversation you said earlier about snapping your bras and just feeding <laughs> your child. Now, the truth is, a lot of women have uh, the perception of breastfeeding in public. There's a, there's a notion around it. That, ah, how can you do that? Ah, come on, you're outside. Ah, this shouldn't be done. So, a lot of uh, young mothers shy away from doing that. And uh, for someone who understands these uh, situations, what would you say about that? Because it's common with young mothers. Because you know, ah, I'm yes. still, I can't be doing that outside where people will be looking at me. There's a perception on that. So what do you have to say to this? Yes, I had the same experience. I mean, you have to even plan your outfits because, mm -hmm. because you're going to breastfeed, you mm -hmm. know. So yes, there's that um, perception and that feeling that new moms have. And I don't even think it's more of a public mentality i think it's a personal perception okay. you know um so there are two angles to this there's the angle of you being shy and yeah. there's the angle of the public frowning against it so there are some restaurants and bands you go to that don't even that are not baby friendly that we will allow you breastfeed in their premises is that not breastfeeding at all or you have to breastfeed with cover so if you don't have like a flannel or anything to yeah. cover yourself mm -hmm. that's already an issue then there's also the struggle of how do I remove my dress? How do I remove my clothes? I don't mm -hmm. want to put myself out there. So yes, they, there is that struggle. But I would say like your baby comes first. Your baby's hunger cue comes first. If your baby wants to eat, your baby wants to eat now. Mm -hmm. And your baby does not care where you are or what you're doing. He just wants to feed. And I would say prioritize. For me, that was what worked for me. So when I get shy or when the public frowns at it or yeah. whatever, my baby won't be. I feed my baby because at the end of the day, my baby is family. Hmm. So that always helped me. That always gave me that confidence. Like I'm doing this for my baby. I'm doing what's best for my son, basically. Interesting. I like the fact that you're like, regardless of what the society would say, my baby Regardless. must eat, <laughs> right? <laughs> okay, so speaking about that, uh, how long uh, should uh, a mother breastfeed her child? Looking at the, uh, like you said, there are situations that can be, uh, uh, that can probably cause a bit of uh, disruption in that flow because of work, uh, some, you know, society and things like that. But how long is the ideal time for a mother uh, to breastfeed her child? And why? Um, and it why? Two years, ideally two years. Um, but realistically, most moms decide to stop around nine months to a year. Hmm. But even if you can't go that far, at least two, six months, at least like the barest minimum. But if you can go, like, both, they go all out. And if you can do to two years, nobody's stopping you. And There's your baby would enjoy all the new trends that. What did you say? I said there's been some myths that they say if you breastfeed your child for too long, uh, the child might not be as, uh, it wouldn't uh, be, it wouldn't develop to be, um, you know, mature in time. He'll still be uh, very, very, you know, childish in thoughts. And I think it's just a myth that goes around if you it, breastfeed it, your child for it, too long. Yeah. Mm -mm, it's a myth. It's a myth. Breastfeeding brings this bond between the mother and child. So mm -hmm. it, it's a myth. It's not true. So you say two years. Ideal yes, time. if you can. Two years. Yes, if you, if you can. Wow, interesting. Okay, uh, because I know a couple of young moms who would do this in nine months, eight months, and they're like, okay, the bottle is the next thing for the child because I think <laughs> he's mature enough to handle the bottle because I don't want to go through the stress of taking this time for two years to make sure I breastfeed my child. But you're speaking from a professional point of view. You see that it is ideal to at least two, at the, okay, at most two years and at least a year, right? Or, yeah, thereabout. Yes, but you have to introduce solid at six months. So while okay. you are still breastfeeding, breastfeeding cannot, the breast milk cannot be sufficient for the child after six months. Okay. So you have to introduce solid after six months, mm -hmm. even though you are still, so if there's a switch now, now you are now like, the supplementary thing is now breast milk because it's normal sufficient. Mm -hmm. So now you can introduce formula after six months, you can introduce solids mm -hmm. and puries, fruits and all of that after six months, mm -hmm. while you are still breastfeeding with the child. Hmm. You know, I, I spoke to uh, a young mom some time back, and she was like, uh, when uh, she decides to do the extraction um, um, style to breastfeed the child, as uh, regards the regular breast to the child, that the child only responds to the regular one and doesn't really respond as much to the one that has been extracted. Now, 
Would you say that some children actually know and they select the kind of feeding <laughs> methods they want? Or is it because of, based on how the, uh, the mom gets to, you know, train the child that will let the child adapt to the style uh, suitable for the mom? How does that work? Yes, yeah, some kids actually reject the bottle. So if you know that you're going back to work, you need to introduce the bottle as early as possible, which means mm -hmm. you pump and you bottle feed. So you can train your child to know that, okay, it's not just this, there's also the bottle. But if your baby breastfeeds directly exclusively for six months, mm -hmm. it's not going to be easy to, or for three months, it's not going to be easy to introduce the bottle. Okay. Although there are some bottles they do now that, um, not promoting any brand, but that are really close to the nipple that they actually do right now that looks and feels as the same shape and almost the same texture. Mm -hmm. So that can be a little deceptive for babies to accept that. But if you know that your time schedule won't let you breastfeed mm -hmm for a long time, then you need to introduce the bottle as early as possible. Oh, wow. So yes, kids know that you have it, and why should I take the bottle from you yeah. when you have the real thing? Yeah. So... That, that's, that's quite interesting, though. I think it, it's, it's to, to the first conversation, when I had the conversation with her, she was like, she never expected that the child would be able to decipher which was which, because, you know, you're just trying to feed the child. The child is hungry, but the child would always reject the one that it was extracted and just cry more and wait for the one from the mother. But it's good that we're clearing that out. Now, let's talk about some myths and some facts about breastfeeding. If you can lead us through some actual facts about breastfeeding, then we go into the myths. Like I just gave you one earlier that they say, ah, if you breastfeed your child too much, uh, he might not be very intelligent. He might not be wise. He might not be that. Mm. Plenty, plenty talk like that. So let's talk about the facts and a bit of the myths and let's see how we can uh, clear the air regarding these ones. Okay. Um, for the facts, like I said earlier, it's free. Yeah. Um, you don't have to warm and you don't have to, like, it's always available. It contains every nutrient your baby needs, at least for the first six months of life. Mm hmm it's it's a balanced you can even call it like a balanced diet balanced diet so it has everything your baby needs easy to digest which means you don't need to give water hmm. this breast milk already contains 80 percent water okay. so you don't need what don't yeah you don't need to give your baby water and uh, if you breastfeed even as a mom you are lower risk to have ovarian cancer later in life so okay. if you breastfeed you have that as well um there's also the immunity boost that comes via breast milk. So breast milk already contains like some antibodies that your baby needs. Mm -hmm. So your baby won't easily have cold, flu, and all these common um, diseases that newborns struggle with. Mm -hmm. um, most likely than not, your baby will escape that. And there's the big one of having a bond with your child. Yeah. You know, children breastfeed for more than beyond, um, what's it called now, beyond hunger. So there's the comfort part of it where, yeah. you know, they are colicky and they just want to breastfeed. Mm. So there's that part of getting the comfort out of breastfeeding. Yeah. And it goes, just goes on and on. It's, it's a nice. long list. Exactly. List. That's nice. Okay, so now that uh, we've been able to get the facts about it, and the very good one that I, I would pick out of this is not just for hunger, but also to feel that companionship with the mom. That's why children also actually breastfeed. So I can understand yeah. why sometimes where mothers would always want to breastfeed, no matter what it is, just to keep that, you know, that uh, communion with their child and keep that relationship stronger. Now, let's go into the myths now. And I know you've heard a whole lot of myths regarding breastfeeding and why it should not be done too long, why you can't do it during the day. There was even one I heard that it's not even good to feed the child during the day, that uh, the sun affects the... I, I, I was confused. So you'd rather do it at night in an enclosed place where it's not too bright. So there are lots of these things, and I feel there are most of superstitious thoughts and things like that. But if you can, are there a few myths you've heard that you're going to like help us to debunk right now? Um, yes, if you breastfeed for too long, your child will get too attached to you. Mm. That's that's not true. Your child needs you. So even if you don't breastfeed, if your child is going to attached so there's something called separation anxiety okay and if your child is at that phase whether you're breastfeeding or not your child is going to be attached your child will not want somebody else to carry him or her mm -hmm. so it has nothing to do 
and there's the one that says breastfeeding will make your breast sag. Yo, yes, that that's one. Not true. <laughs> that that's one. not true. That's not true. And that's a major concern of young mothers. They don't want that to happen. So they'd be like, hey, 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 I don't want this child to spoil my fine gear. <laughs> so that's always been a concern. So it's not true, Abby. No, it's not true. Wow. It's not true. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Oh, they've heard. They've, they, they must have heard that. Is there any other <laughs> one that you can just drop in there so that we can clear the air right now? Then we can wrap this up. Um, what's that breastfeeding meat? Um, okay, breastfeeding does not fuel your baby. So because some babies cluster feed, which means they feed a lot, mm -hmm. they believe that our, the older generation believe that it means you're not producing enough milk. Mm. So you need to supplement or complement yeah. with formula. That's also not true. Okay. So they tell you, oh, your baby's not getting enough milk. That's why your baby's cranky. That's why your baby is crying. Yeah. It's not true. Oh, wow. Okay. Well, it's good that we've cleared this out. And I believe that all the young moms who are watching this interview can take notes and know that, okay, oh, these things that they are saying, oh, is a lie. It doesn't work like that. And they see the, the, the positive side of breastfeeding. And like you said, if your child is hungry, you have to feed the child, you know, regardless of where you are and at the time you, you, you have to feed the child. But I, I like the fact that we're having this conversation today so that young mothers out there can see it and uh, see it as a positive act only and not just looking at the negatives. What will society say? I won't uh, feel good, how my body will look afterwards and things like that. But thank you very much for this conversation, Adidayo, and uh, we believe this was very, very insightful. Thank you for your time. To enjoy more of these our Ugonke videos when you just watch, press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.